Okay, I'll, I'll start reading again. God's promise is, he shall seek me and find me when he shall search for me with all your heart. The whole heart must be yielded to God or the change can never be wrought in us by which we are to be restored to his likeness. By nature, we are alienated from God. The Holy Spirit describes a condition in such words as these, dead in trespasses and sins, the whole head is sick and the whole heart faint, no soundness in it. We are held fast in the snare of Satan, taken captive by him at his will. God desires to heal us, to set us free. But since this requires an entire transformation, a renewing of our whole nature, we must yield ourselves wholly to him. Um, but just for the sake of the recording, because I put it on late, we are reading Steps to Christ, Chapter 5, Consecration. And so we just um, read the first two paragraphs. Okay, are there any any addition or anything that you have picked up or anything to add in the in those two um, in those two paragraphs well you know when you think of um yielding the whole heart to God which is the mind, by the way. Am I right in saying that? Which is yes, the mind. I think, I think it's it not is. The, yeah, it's not the physical heart. Mm. <laughs> because that would, uh, that would be quite strange, really. Um, although God is in control of that too, but he's talking about the mind. You know, you wonder sometimes, how can you yield the whole mind to God? Because it goes on to say, the whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. No soundness is in it. Now, we, we realise that we become new creatures in Christ when we give ourselves to him. Yes, we do. Um, but is this not talking about not a one-off? Oh, I've given my heart to Christ. I'm a new creature now. I believe what the Bible says. And that's it. My heart is yielded to Christ. It's not like that, is it? It's 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 things. There's sin all around us. There's sin in us. There's you know sin attacks us. So it has to be a daily process. Not even daily. I find sometimes it's every second. It's every minute. You know. Because you may even go onto your laptop to, to find something. And what pops up? Something that's unacceptable. That produces itself in front of you. <laughs> and you have to say, oh, God, please help me. Because it's going into the mind. So it's, it's a minutely process. It's a daily process. It's not a one-off yielding of the heart to, to God. Yes, that's that's true. And as you're saying, something pops up. And the funny thing is, uh, I find that these things, when they pop up, they seem to stay in your mind all the time, even if you don't want to think about it. You know, so as you're saying, Sister Fran, it's a daily, in fact, minute by minute consecration, yielding your, your whole mind to, to, to God's word. And I think this is how it's um, for us to, to memorize scripture. So when these things come into our mind, we can quickly um, say a scripture and we also can pray to God, which is so good because God is hearing and he's, he, is, he even sees the thoughts, the very thoughts that we are thinking. So sometimes, well, all the time, I think it's best when these things come into our mind to send up a prayer and say, Lord, please help me, because we try. And the harder we try, it seems sometimes these things come more and more. 
especially like the, the computer and all these uh, gadgets that sometimes you'll be in a prayer meeting and then the phone will ring, you'll switch it off and then it will ring again, you'll switch it off, you know, and then you're like, in the end, you think, oh, let me just talk to this person. That's your mind already gone, you know? So, yeah, it's um, it's really, really... Um... You know, the um, our minds is the biggest... Is the what's it? Um, it's a computer. It's the biggest computer. Our mm. minds, mm. and we do mm. when we take things in. It stays there, and sometimes it goes to the back of our minds, but then it can pop up again. But as this said, the warfare against self is a battle. So we are on the war field. Every minute of the day, we are fighting a battle. But mm. we can win this battle with Christ at our... Mm. Mm. That's true. That's true. If there's no other comments, um, Sister Fran, would you like to read the next... Uh, The next two paragraphs. Right. Where did you get to? Uh, I, I, yes. Okay. So I start at the government. Okay. The government. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Thank you. The government of God is not as Satan would make it appear. Founded upon a blind submission and unreasoning control. It appeals to the intellect and the conscience. Come now, let us reason together, is the creator's invitation to the beings he has made. God does not force the will of his creatures. He cannot accept an homage that is not willingly and inti inti intelligently given. A mere false submission would prevent all real development of mind or character. It would make man a mere automaton, a robot, that is. Such is not the purpose of the creator. He desires that man, the crowning work of his creative power, shall reach the highest possible development. He sets before us the heights of blessing to which he desires to bring us through his grace. He invites us to give ourselves to him that he may work his will in us. It remains for us to choose whether we will set, will be set free from the bondage of sin, to share the glorious liberty of the sons of God. In giving ourselves to God, we must necessarily give up all that would separate us from him. Hence the Saviour says, whosoever Whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Whatever shall draw away from the heart from God must be given up. Mammon is the idol of many. The love of money, the desire for wealth, is the golden chain that binds them to Satan. Reputation and worldly honour are worshipped by another class. The life of selfish ease and freedom from responsibility is the idol of others. But these slavish bands must be broken. We cannot be half of the Lord and half of the world. We are not God's children unless we are such entirely. Amen. 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 Are there any comments or anything that... Uh... That sister friend read that jumped up at you. And we see God is so good because he says, come now, let us reason together. So it is for us to, to, to come to the Lord because he is willing to, 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 um, to sort things out with us. So, you know, no matter how sometimes, you know, you hear people think, oh, I'm such a sinner and God will not accept me and this and that. 
But no, here is the promise. He says, come now, let us reason together. So he's appealing to us. He's appealing to our conscience. And no matter how far we have been, it is for us to accept and be willing to, to, um, to come to him. And of course, we can't do it on our own except the Holy Spirit moves us. And for us to also listen to that still small voice. Because if we're not going to listen to the still small voice, then we won't hear God speaking to us. And then also I found that here yeah, it also talks about um, we cannot uh, love love God and love man. It's in, uh, I mean, love the world. So that's in, in itself is impossible. You can't love two, two masters. I mean, it's it's like now you, you you can't be married to one man and then get married to another man. But now that's polygamy. We know that, and it has been in the even in the Bible. But it's for me. I find it very very difficult to say you you will love two people at the same time. You know, that's just um, an example. That's just an example that I that I just came up with. Mm -hmm. Can I say that um, the first paragraph that I read is talking about um, giving ourselves to God. It's talking about it's talking about that it says that God doesn't force; He cannot force love. He cannot force you to give yourself to Him. You must give yourself to Him willingly. It says, invite us to give ourselves to him that he may work his will in us. So if we don't give ourselves to him, he can't work his will in us. Now, I talked, I said at the beginning that everything we do is a daily process. It's not a one-off, once saved, always saved. And no, it doesn't work that way. I wish it did. It would be easy. It's an everyday process. So even the giving of ourselves to him is an everyday process that he can work his will in us. And then it goes on to say that we're so willing to give ourselves to the world, but we want to be one foot in the church and we want to be one foot outside the church. We want to say that we are of God but we are doing all the things that the world is doing. We're insulting God. And it does, it does really hurt me. We're insulting God. And then we're telling people, oh, oh, oh I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, or, or I, I have a faith, but we can see all the world on the person and, the, and, and even their actions. Brethren, I saw a lot of that this week. And it really grieved me. It really brought me to a low place. It re I'm going to be honest with you. It brought me to a low place. I thought these people were truly of God, our own Adventists. And then I saw them in an event. And oh, my life. It dishonored God in every way. Let us be 100% for God or 100% in the world. One or the other, brethren. I'll stop there. Amen. That that's so true. It's it's our the our lifestyle. Yes, as you're saying, we call ourselves Adventists, but outside the church, what do we do? You know. So we we as you're saying, we can't have one foot foot foot. Uh, in the church and one foot outside the church and we call ourselves Christians. It's impossible to serve two masters. So we've got to really surrender our lives to God because this is, this is what uh, that God wants us. This is why he says, come, let us reason together. He keeps pleading with us, but it's, it's we that are running away from him. And in everything that we do, you know, we like moving away from him and he, he's drawing us closer and closer to, to himself. This is destroying our young people. They've spoken yeah. to them. It's destroying them. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, even this, uh, this 
It says, the life of selfish ease and freedom from responsibility is the idol of others. But these slavish bands must be broken. We cannot be half the Lord's and half the widow's. We are not God's children unless we are such entirely. So this tells us that we, we can't be half and half. You know, we, 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 we need to um, consecrate ourselves every minute of our lives. Don't know if there's any any other. Um... Um, yes. Yeah. So thank you for those thoughts. I think they're very very pressing matters um, in the church today, and just even in our own homes. You know, we have to be daily challenging our faith in our hearts and saying, "Am I consecrated? Am I born again Christian? Will God say if He came up today that?" he knows me or will he say depart from me I never knew you I think that's something that everyone has to personally be you know self-examining um but it is a sad state sometimes when we, when we when we see our brethren that we love um and often respect not abiding or living by the very word that we are convicted to live by and know that we should be as Christians because I think sometimes you're tempted to lose that respect for them you're tempted to um in your mind start to view them differently because you think oh my you know uh and it can like it can, it can certainly be heartbreaking you know like our sister Fran said so it's important to keep our brethren in prayer you know and just ask for wisdom and how to reach out to them and point out to them the sin and call them to repentance. But mm. my husband and I were reading September 7th. We managed by God's grace to get devotion in this morning. Mm. <laughs> we, are, we are trying because with a newborn baby, it's not easy. Like, But um, we looked at September 7th of Christ triumphant. And I think, you know, that, that sentiment that Sister Fran picked up about God desiring us to yield our will to him and it invites us to give ourselves to him that he may work his will in us. Um, I just thought to myself, how what does that look like practically? What does that sentiment look like? Because, yeah, that's part of what consecration is. You know, I love that song. I actually chose it from a baptism song that says, take my heart and let it be, take my hands, take my lips, take my, let it be consecrated to thee. So I said, what does that look like practically if we're saying, Lord, take my hands, take my feet, take my eyes, or, you know, take my lips? Ooh. How do we apply that in practical sense? Um, Can I jump in? <clears throat> sure. You know, you know um, sanctification is a daily process. Living a sanctified life. And we have, to, LNG White tells us how to do it. And the Bible tells us how to do it because, you know, people don't like to hear LNG Weiss lots of, say, you see LNG Weiss lots of the time. But um, it says every morning, dedicate yourself to God. Every morning. And throughout the day, let your thoughts rise into heavenly things. Um, <clears throat> read things, listen to things that are spiritual. You're going out to the shop. Talk to God while you're in the shop. Well, I do anyway. <laughs> Talk to God while you're in the shop. Before you even go in the shop, Lord, don't let me buy anything that would dishonor you. Keep my mind, you know, on things above. Help me, Lord. Even, I, I, and I'm being honest, I will even get up sometimes and say, Lord, it's me and you today. What am I going to wear today, God? What should I put on? You know, we look in that mirror, some of us, and I, 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 I sometimes I wonder, do we really look in that mirror? Be with us in every aspect of our life. Pray without ceasing. Talk to God about everything that you do. Thank you. No, thanks for that. I, I think I think um those are very important principles. And not one that I talked about much in the Christian world today. Um, but also uh, I, 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 another one that Sister White mentions in her writings that isn't considered much among us is the work of ministry. 
So when we are consecrating ourselves to God, yes, there's the there's the standard of daily yielding our lives, um, what we eat, what we drink, what we listen to. But I think isn't surely there's a further work to there's a further yielding to do in terms of giving our talents to God, giving our resources to God, giving our families to God, our time to the Lord, uh, um, in terms of ministry, because I believe that sometimes the Lord has been speaking to our family recently about this, in that we can get so wrapped up in our own lives that we forget that God has actually called us as families, as individuals, to a life of ministry and service to his cause, because if we lose sight of that as Christians, then I think sometimes we are in danger of losing that need of our consecrated of a consecrated life to God, because um, she Sister White does say in this devotion that we're looking at, she said that um, it is titled Christ, Christ wants us to bear fruit by working for Him, and it says if we have only the one talent, we begin and we begin to put that to the exchanges then we begin to work with that one talent and God sees that we are faithful in that which is least, then he will give us another talent. And thus the talent keeps increasing and growing. And the more we put it to the exchanges, the more talents we have to employ to the glory of God. And she says that um, taking up the work of ministry, she says, there are those who are quite, wait, sorry. Um, let me just read. It is not merely the delegated ministers. There is where our people make a great... Oh, sorry, let me just start from the beginning. Let me, so it makes sense. Um, sorry, sorry, I'm just trying to figure... I don't want to read too much of it because <laughs> I just want to pick out what's necessary. Um. We have the enemy in our world to contend with. We have the power of darkness to meet. We have to be in this conflict as long as time shall last. Um, now, here is something for us to study. We have opportunities now to bear fruit. We can reveal that we are fruit bearing branches of the vine. And if we go on now in a careless and indifferent manner, then what will our position be? Um, and also, I think basically this is this this chapter is pointing to the fact that as Adventists, every soul, every follower of Christ is to take up the delegated work of ministering. It's not only for the ministers that are to do that. Um, she says that to, the Adventists or the people of God seem to think that um, day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, um, it is the conflict. It's the ministers that must take up the care of the people and the flock. But she says, no, this work belongs to every soul of us. So I think, you know, sometimes it's 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 good focusing on the personal and most important devotion to the Lord. But what about the broader field of ministry and giving our finances, giving our, you know, like, for example, my husband and I, we've been doing a few videos on YouTube, but um, just sharing a few bits here and there but I think what do you sorry to go on but my question to you guys is what do you feel about the idea that every family and every household should have a designated ministry um, you know whether they call it a name or whether they have a sort of mission and a purpose for that ministry and that they should be actively involved in ministry that this should be something that every family employs what 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 do you think of that view i think first of all every individual right um should have a service and then it should um be a family affair as lngy states you know i can say it's a must you're, we're all saved to serve. That, that's the old point of being saved too, to serve. Because if you're not serving, you're being selfish. That means you're not loving. But as a family, I think, you know, um, not all families are Christians, as you know. 
not every member is a Christian. So it can that can be quite difficult. If every member is a Christian, then you can have a total service. And this involves the children. It does not neglect the children. The children are involved when they reach an age where they can be. My children were involved in all that I did. They went out with me witnessing. We did in gathering together. We had a family, um, a family company, as Ellen G. White says, you must sit round that table as a family and discuss things. So I totally agree with you. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say, yes, we can do ministry, but it needs to start with ourselves. We have to be right with God before we take God's word out. Because if we are not right with God, how can we um, take God's word to the world or to anybody? So I think this uh, consecration is really uh, with us and God. Because as it as it says in in the beginning of this um, chapter, it says God's promise is, "Ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart." So it's talking about ourselves, and then yes, families can get involved later on and all that. Thing. But we've got to be right with God in the first place, and yes, um, ministry, um, any kind of ministry that you want to to start up as a family, as a group. Yes, by all means, you know, it's uh, because God, this is what God commissioned each and every one of us, even his disciples when he chose them. But they first spent time with Christ before going out. It was only when Christ uh, um, uh, died that the Holy Spirit uh, descended on them and then they went out but those three years th those three and a half years he they spent with Christ so it's for us well to me I think it's for for each and every one of us to spend time with with God then when you see you are ready to go out and minister to the world and then Yes, there, I mean, there is no right way or wrong way or whatever. I don't know what others think about that, but that's my intake to say we've got to consecrate ourselves to, to God, come right with God first. Okay, we can read. I will read one more paragraph and then we will discuss and then uh, get into our prayers. I think there's other people that want to go to work. If there is no other um, other thought or anything about the paragraphs we've read before. Okay, I will read. There are those who profess to serve God while they rely up upon their own efforts to obey his law, to form a right character and secure salvation. Their hearts are not moved by any deep sense of the love of Christ, but they seek to perform the duties of the Christian life as that which God requires of them in order to gain heaven. Such religion is worth nothing. When Christ dwells in the heart and the soul will, will be so filled with his love, with the joy of communion with him, that it will cleave to him and in the contemplation of him, self will be forgotten. Love to Christ will be the spring of action. Those who feel the constraining love of God do not ask how little may be given to meet the requirements of God. They do not ask for the lowest standard, but aim at perfect conformity to the will of the Redeemer. With earnest desire, they yield all and manifest an interest proportionate to the value of the object which they seek. A profession of Christ without this deep love is mere talk, dry formality, and heavy drudgery. Are there any comments on that um, paragraph? Uh, I'm not going to say anything about the paragraph, but um, 
I missed some of the readings in some of the other chapters. The reason being is I thought it was going to be every Thursday. Um, so I, so what I'm asking, Sister Rhoda, is that if you could put it on the site when we are going to do the Steps to Christ, because it seems to be different days. Um, well, what had happened is, yes, we're supposed to be only doing it on Thursdays. But then what had happened, um, I was asked to do um, Monday, and I think it was Wednesday. And then Monday, we didn't have a speaker. So we just, um, I think we read the steps to Christ. No, we didn't. Well, what, what I normally try, try and do is we read a a chapter at a time then when we finish that chapter and then one of the sisters uh, gives us a talk like last week before we go on to the next chapter maybe uh, I mean before yeah before we go on to the next chapter maybe that's where you kind of like got lost last week no, not really could you possibly just put it on our site that it will be steps to Christ today Right, okay. Oh, and send, and I'm not on the site. If you just send me the same thing, then I'll know. Thank you. Right. Okay. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, this this um paragraph that we read it says, "When Christ dwells in the heart, the soul will be f so filled with His love, with the joy of communion with Him." that you will cleave to him. So this to me means that if if I'm if I'm if Christ is dwelling in my heart and his love is in me, it will show out to others. And then thus I can take God's word out and share his word with other people. But if God's love is not in me, then how am I going to share that love? It will be, uh, um, I will only be fooling myself to say I am Christ, Christ is in me, and yet, and yet I go out and tell other people about God's love. How can I tell about God's love when I don't know what that God's love is, how it uh, portrays in my life? That's the way I look at this one. Don't know if there's any anything else to add or. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, carry on. No, go on, sister. I was just going to say it obviously tells us that we are reliant on our own selves. Hmm. That while they rely upon their own efforts to obey His law, to form the right character and secure salvation, so we fail because we are not relying on Christ. So the question then is, how do you rely on Christ? And we had that in the beginning. It's told us how to do that. So we must give up. The thing is, we, we, we haven't died to self when these things happen. Right. Because you can't provoke a dead man. You can't force a dead man to do things that he doesn't, doesn't want to do. We have to learn to die to self daily. That's it. That's right. Yeah. It's a daily walk, a minute by minute actually walk because our minds um, are evil. Whatever we see and behold, it seems to stick in our hearts, in our minds. So this is why we've got to surrender every minute of our lives. Go on, amen. Sister um, amen to that. Surrendering, I think, is what this chapter is really saying, that we uh, our religion is not the religion of Christ unless it involves surrender. And it involves asking for the standard and seeking, having the love in your heart for God to want to meet that standard, not seeing how you can get away with little, well, with as little as possible, um, and saying, well, is it really necessary for me to give up my diet? Is it really necessary for me to uh, adhere to country living? Is it really necessary? Can I not serve God, you know, 
in where I am now, what I believe, you know, is, is necessary. And I think this chapter is saying that we will not be, when, when, we, when we are consecrated to God, when the love of Christ is dwelling in our hearts, and I think this is, chapter is really good for self-examination, <laughs> if anything else. It's good to to um challenge a Christian and his faith and their faith to say that wait a minute, actually, as a Christian, have I been just trying to get away with doing as little as possible as a Christian? You know, and or am I actually seeking advice from others on how I can be the better a better Christian? Am I willing to take the advice? And I think we find that. We, we do struggle as Christians sometimes to yield and to surrender. But th again, the chapter tells us that that is only when we don't have the love of Christ abiding in our hearts. So mm -hmm. the best thing to do, I think, is to apply the scripture to one's own self, to one's own family, to one's own home and say, Lord, help me, help me to consecrate my heart, help me to surrender because I cannot do it of myself. Um, I see that there's so much wrong with my thoughts, with my actions, and with my wanting to meet your requirements. Sometimes I find excuses to not do it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I make excuses. But you know just when... It's like... it's like oh, the Because being a new parent, I mean, I know I still have a lot to learn. But I think every parent knows when their child is just not wanting to make any effort at all. And... Every parent knows when their child is genuinely struggling and needs a help and needs a hand. God knows when we are genuinely struggling and he knows when we are just like, what, what, not, not putting in as much effort as, as we could. And as a, as, a, as a good parent, he tries to encourage us, but also he will reprove us when we are just being lazy. So I think... It's just amazing to me that we have such a God that bears so long with us, but we should not take advantage of it. Amen. Can I Amen. ask a question um, around this? Um, we know we have to tend to our own selves, but the question I'm asking, am I my brother's keeper? Am I? Should I try to help my brother to be saved every day? We we are supposed to be living our lives to help others. And the first important people to help is our brethren. Now, you may go to your brethren in a loving way and say, brother, sister, um, and you all start. You have to start. You know I love you. What I'm going to say to you is out of love. Because no matter how sweet you say it, they will go back and say you came in a terrible way. Now, you're going to say to them, well, you know, I have noticed so and so and so and so, and I'm so concerned about you. Now, when you do that, most of the time they will say, who do you think you are? You're so pious. You're so holy. <laughs> You're judgmental. <laughs> You're not loving. But another text says their blood will be upon your shoulder if you do not help people and point things out to them in a loving way. To be honest, brethren, some of us have come to the point where we no longer are going to talk to our brethren because of the reception we get and because of the approach of ministers as well and all the rest of it. So it then becomes quite difficult. And you, you tend to be able to win an outsider or capture the mind of a, an outsider quicker than you will your brethren. Because my sister said, the only thing we can do and ask and let the Holy and ask the Holy Spirit to deal with it and help. Yeah, I, hope thank you you. I hope you don't see that as a negative. Because no, we, no. Are, we are our brothers and sisters keepers. You don't want to Yeah, um, I think you went mute there, Sister Fran. Yes, we are our brother's keepers. And the best thing to do, I know that uh, people say, oh, you're judgmental. But as long as you have said your piece 
and leave it with God because it's not for us to change that person's outlook or thought or whatever. They will they either listen or they will carry on the way they, they, they are. But you pray for them that they will change. And, um, and I mean, you can, you can go over and over to them, but sometimes just once or twice, because then they, they'll look at you as if to say, oh, you're judgmental, whatever I say, I'm saying you think it's wrong, this and that. But as long as you say it once or twice and leave the rest to God and leave, leave them to contend with, uh, with God, as long as you have said your piece. That's, that's the way I, I look at it, that we are our brother's keepers at all times. And yes, to correct one another, to strengthen one another, and also to pray for one another. And that's the most important thing, is to pray for them. And you just tell them, even if you're not going to listen to me, but I'm going to pray. They can't stop you from praying. You're not going to pray for them when they're there. You pray in your own house, in wherever you are, you pray for them. That one day they might come back and say, oh, you know, sister friend, what you said, this, this, you know, and thank you. They will thank I've, you. And, I've had that. And, I've had that and sometimes, sure. sometimes they won't thank you, but you leave it in God's hands. You've, you've done your piece. Yeah. Yes, I've, I've had that where people have come back to me and said, yes, we did go, I did go away and ponder about what you yeah. said and what you yeah. said is totally right. And thank you for your prayers. But the church is becoming a place where really, um, Everybody just minds their own business. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Thank you very much for all the comments and everything. We, uh, the time is running short. We will say our main prayers. I have, um, I'll have a quick word of prayer. Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the many blessings. Thank you so much for helping us to understand about consecration that Every day, every minute, we need to consecrate our lives to you and come right with you and our fe fellow men. So, Lord, we want to thank you for this reading. In Jesus' name, I pray and thank you. Amen. Okay, we will have our praise and thanksgiving. I have um, Psalm 117, verse 1 to 2. Anyone to take that one up for us, please? I, I will. What was the verse again? Psalm 100 and... 117, verse 1 to 2. But you can use any one that you, that you like. Thank you, Sister Shavit. Psalm 117, verse 1 to 2. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you. And then I have confession and the church. I've got Psalm 86, verse 7. Anyone to take that one up for us, please? Okay, I'll do that one. And then we have uh, the Holy Spirit and evangelism. I've got John 1, verse 32 to 33. Anyone to take that one up for us, please? Sister Fran, would you like to take that one up for us, please? Oh, I was struggling with my All unmuting. Right. Okay, okay. Um, the Holy Spirit and Evangelism, John 1, verse 32 to 33. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you. And then we, we'll take a minute for ourselves to confess our sinful ways, and then uh, we'll continue with the pray, praise and thanksgiving. It's Sister Chavette. Confession and the Church is myself. Then the Holy Spirit and evangelism is uh, Sister Fran. Um, and we can keep our prayers short and to the point so that we can uh, pray other prayers as well. Thank you. Could you, could you tell me again what the text was, please? Uh, I've got John 1, verse 32 to 33, but you can use any text that you like. Okay, thank you. 